Thanks. <laughs> Welcome to a Cosby sweater bowl of dude soup. I was going to say that about your sweater. Thank you. For, yeah, I got to keep the roofies in the pockets. <laughs> nice. That's good. That wow. was a good impression. It's like he's here and I'm afraid for my life. <laughs> or your butt. You'll survive. Um, uh, he wouldn't touch me there. Uh, this is this is dude soup. Uh, I'm Elise Willems and I'm joined today by... James Willems. Uh, uh, Viscount of Fun Times. Uh, I'm the adopted child of the Willemses, Adam Kovic. <laughs> And I am Bruce Green with a dude suit pillow on my on my lap. Is that real? You can, I think you can buy too. this. You can yeah. buy this thing at uh, at roosterteeth.com. I think. We're we're Did such sellouts. Them? We'll sell anything. You want a dog? We got three. <laughs> legally, got legally, Rooster Teeth is not allowed to merchandise Benson. Really? He, he didn't sign the contract. He hasn't signed any documents, and nor have yeah. I signed any oh, documents. You're so smart, Benson. You're so smart. <laughs> you hold out for that big contract, <laughs> the big C, we call it. Uh, speaking of contracts, this episode of Dude Soup is brought to you by two sponsors. Uh, the first is Omaha Steaks, who have a ton of gift ideas for gourmet food lovers, and you can head to Omaha, omahasteaks.com and enter the code DUDE in the search bar and add the family gift pack to your cart and get a 77% savings. And second, you can get 15% off of Movement Watches today with free shipping by going to movementwatches.com slash dudesoup, and we'll hear more about them later in the show. Uh, thank you guys for joining my podcast today. Yeah, yeah thanks it's for having us It's on required. Here. Yeah, thanks. It's, uh, oh, <laughs> That's I see. The name of it. <laughs> I well, it's how does it feel coming back to this podcast uh, after the last one you did was so successful? Well, I don't know if the, the podcast as a whole was successful. I think that the play was successful, and that was wow. only as successful as the mm. talent. No, no, so you wrote it. That, you've written a very long play. I spit that out. Let's face <laughs> it. That was. That I, was I'm was, starting to see a correlation between things that people really like on our channel. And things that people don't really watch. Ooh. Oh, oh yeah. So like for like sure. Twits and Crits is probably the most vocal fan base we've ever had. It is. It's true. And the numbers have just been dipping below. So nobody watches. There's anymore. like <laughs> there's like three thousand hardcore people who yeah. really like it, really? and then the rest of them are just stone people who ex who thought it was something else. Yeah. <laughs> and that's really cool because um, <laughs> drugs are hard to find, and they found them. Well, but, we've talked in length about like YouTube best practices and stuff. Yeah. And so, you know, you build a channel of stuff that you think people would be interested in. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, I mean, we've conditioned people to like bad games Comedy game being plays. played worse, yeah. basically. Right. And so when you put D&D &D on there, doesn't matter how good it is or how entertaining it is. Yeah. The people that, that watch, still watch it, they just like us and they'll watch us do anything. Yeah. I'm not prepared to take advantage of them though. I see. Buy this dude suit pillow today. Yeah. <laughs> Get your Benson plushie. Check out his cans. That's, <laughs> that's right. A fan good. didn't send this to us. <laughs> Our company did. I'm pretty sure. I, I thought it was on the website. It is definitely on the website. There we go. Okay, okay good. <laughs> Omar has seven. Confirmed. Yeah. So today. <laughs> <his> pillow room. <laughs> that's how my bed. I made him in my bed. Today, <laughs> the, uh, the year of our Lord, it's Cyber Monday when we record this. Oh, right. Yeah, we're live. And right now, yeah. Did you guys buy anything? TV. I bought a TV. <laughs> just bought a TV. Yeah. I thought you had a good TV already. I, I do. Now but he's I, got two. I bought one for yeah. for as a gift. Ooh. Um, and uh, for myself, it's a forty. Yeah, it's a gift for myself. A forty inch four K TV Samsung mm -hmm. for three fifty. Is it also curved? Uh, I don't know if it's curved actually. <gasps> That's curved. a deal breaker. If it's not curved, it's, yeah, it I don't know. It's definitely not curved. I thought the, I thought the curve fad care. went away. I don't care. Your board has to be able to grind on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I gotta be able to do <laughs> No, I have no idea if it's curved, but it's an amazing what's, what's deal. What's the next TV fad going to be? Because we they tried 3D, then they mm -hmm. tried curved. Don loves his 3D TV. He watches 3D movies all the time. He falls asleep. No, at home, at home. At home. He falls asleep he, in the theaters. He must fall asleep at home, too. Well. Yeah, but that's, he curls up in the window and goes to sleep. He <laughs> like walk. a cat. Did you guys buy anything? No. No. You know, I mean, we I bought... actually foolishly made a mistake of buying a lot of stuff like weeks before. So I bought a bunch of computer parts yeah. for myself yeah. and for Elise weeks before. And in hindsight, I was like watching all the deals and I was like, <laughs> maybe that was a bad idea. But it's fine. It meant that we had the stuff for the long weekend. Yeah, I, I, I just got a new PC. Oh, no, yeah. Also, speaking on the subject of the, I was going to ask you guys how your Thanksgiving weekends are, but I'll just talk about mine. Good. Please. <laughs> that good. That good. Uh, I'm introducing a new segment in the podcast here, uh, Lisa's Picks. Okay. okay. This is the last podcast I'm going to be hosting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we can just tell everyone the show's getting canceled. Oh, <laughs> well, no. Lawrence is back Regardless next of week. How well it does. Lawrence is back next week. But uh, yeah, Lisa's Picks. So I got my new PC. and uh, Hold on. What kind of video card does it have in it? 970? No, no. What does it have? 1060. Oh, 10, that's a pretty good video card. Yeah. 1060. A 10, yeah, 1060 is very 1060 good. 1060 is higher rated than the 980. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because when they announced the new video cards, they said, here For it is, games. the 1080, and everyone went, whoa, and they said, and if you can't afford that, here's the 1070. Yeah. 
Also, here's a 1060. I was, what does that mean? Like, yeah. is it starting to go? Well, it's, 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 it's the next tier up, basically. Is 1060 okay. the one that's spontaneously combusting in no. flames? That's the that's Galaxy Note 7. No, well, no, no, no. The ten, the ten, ten, some of the 1080s are. Some of the 1080s, I think, are. Yeah, oh, I was sure. reading that. Are, are like, bursting yeah. in that's so cool. Well, that's so they go cool. too. They have too yeah. many graphics. Yeah. You're just like, I can't handle it. But you have the you have the six gig model, not the three gig. Let's get back to Elise's picks. Oh, sorry, Elise's picks. That's all we're talking about. I was so excited because I finally got to to start playing Owl Boy this weekend. That's why I set up the 1060 because yeah. she's playing Owl Boy. Yeah, right, right, right. She gets 60. she gets more frames in Battlefield One on Ultra than I do, but she's playing Owl Boy. Left uh -huh. my computer on all night installing Battlefield One, and then I played Owl Boy for that's like great. four hours. Yeah, it's that, delightful. That's a game designed for the NES or the Super. <laughs> a little in between. <laughs> okay. Oh wow. Yeah. Jaguar. <laughs> so maybe. 14 bits. 32, a solid 30, healthy 32. Oh, wow. It's 16. Let's At least, while you're talking about Owlboy, will you do me a favor and look up gameplay of Owlboy? Oh, yeah, I want to yeah, see yeah, if it's It actually does look really pretty. Yeah, I'd like to see, it's number one, if it's pretty, but number two, if it looks exactly the like I think it is. The ambiance of the game is very nice. <laughs> I, I want to hear, Bruce, what's your prediction for well, Owlboy? I told you, you're either, I said jumping from platform to platform collecting orbs. <laughs> yeah. But she said flying. It's so. beautiful, you Well, guys. but also, okay. Okay, so to finish out what she was saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, guys. <laughs> to finish out, what we're looking at gameplay of Owlboy, and he's asleep in a 16-bit a cottage okay, or whatever. Okay, so it should mean it said that Owlboy is a mute. All right? Oh. He's your classic underdog character. He's bullied by his mentor. Oh, poor Owlboy. And Owlboy has, he has, you know, you build a party. It has very, like, RPG, light RPG elements. Yeah. Um, if you liked games like Secret of Mana on the Super NES, you'd probably enjoy something like this. If you Wait. liked o Ori in the Blind Forest, maybe. Owls only go out at night. <laughs> well... That's common missing. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they, then they that, eat rats that aspect of him everywhere. is more boy. Um, <laughs> what she's not telling you is that right after I plugged in her monitor and set up everything, and I'm like, there, you're ready to go. She booted PC up Owlboy and then plugged in a controller. Because yeah. <laughs> that's the optimal way to play Owlboy. It you is. can't yeah. play this on console right now. That would make sense. That would make sense. Um, this guy's using a mouse, but fuck the developer, right? <laughs> <laughs> what does he know? But yeah, this is Elise's pick uh, <laughs> for the week. Uh, how, is, how were your Thanksgivings? Good. I know how yours Adam was. and I got through a lot of Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, we're just burning, <laughs> burning through it, trying to get that Genji skin. <laughs> You'll get good. it. You will get it's it. It's a great what's strategy. The, I think. What's it's the a, deadline on that? Uh, January. January. Yeah. Um, I, it's it's a good strategy, I think, um, to try and get you to play this game because it's smart. We had no interest and wouldn't be playing it otherwise. But by the end of probably this week, we'll have played 15 matches of Heroes yeah. of the Storm. But the thing is, so. We haven't played Heroes in the Storm for a while, and for I guess those who don't know, free to play MOBA, Blizzard made it. It's like very approachable. Um, we played it like a while ago. We That's couldn't fun. really get into it. It was fun. And then Joel left the company, so then we don't play it anymore. Yeah, he was our general. Yeah, like, he used to lead he, us into battle. He would well, and he was so nice about it. Like, oh, you guys are doing great. Yeah. You're having so much As fun. As he died inside. Yeah, because <laughs> he knew we were doing horrible. But then Overwatch came out. And we said, "Fuck that noise." <laughs> um, but they put Zarya out and Tracer, and they're putting so Overwatch Dang. heroes are now coming into. Uh, Heroes of the Storm and Zarya is a lot of fun to play as, but we just play against AI. We so, yeah, we, no, just, we are no good. Yeah. We're terrible. No, we're not. We, we're absolutely game, terrible. But we're and we're just trying to get through as fast as possible. But we're playing against AI at the easiest difficulty level, and now just trying to race the clock mm -hmm. to see if we can just finish a match in under seven minutes. It's tough. Um, but I'm playing as Tracer, and he's playing as Zarya. And at a certain point, we were like. What are we? What are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> Should we just go play Overwatch? Yeah. The good thing is we don't have to leave Overwatch Blizz Blizz voice chat. Oh yeah. When we switch to the other game. Oh, I see. What you're yeah. Saying. yeah. Stay in the same Blizz chat. Which you couldn't you could barely get to work. But. <laughs> I caught Adam's illness, I, maybe. and then I was battling that all all like went home Wednesday night to start my long weekend, no. and then I was like, oh, my throat feels real raw. And then I just from that point on, I was just I felt been, bad because I only took one sick day. Yesterday, but that means I had all that other time to get you guys infected with whatever I had. It was like a three-week disease. You, oh, you had a sucked. you had a fever yeah, on Monday was, and Tuesday of last it was week. Incubating for a while it went, inside you. It went from a throat infection to a fever, and it was just Oof. it was consistent hell. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, whatever. There's people suffering in the world. I'm fine. I'm I'm a. You're all better now. I'm yeah. better now. I got a. I bought a camera to watch my cats. <laughs> oh yeah. Happy Thanksgiving to yeah, me. Yeah. Her name is Jess. <laughs> that was my Black Friday um, or Super Saturday or uh, Silly Sunday <laughs> deal. Yeah. Whatever they had. <laughs> silly um, Sunday. I don't know. Yeah, I, I wanted to hang out with you guys, Does. but um, Elise used this uh, archaic system of communicating with me because we we're I knew we were all going to be in town, and so I was like, "Oh, what are you guys doing?" Uh, Elise brought we up. We don't all have you can families, eat. so. Yeah, well, Elise, Elise brought up all you can eat sushi. Oh yeah, yeah. 
And I was like, oh yeah, and like Jess was into that. I'm like, cool. Then you emailed me. Yeah, like, that's right. Like a, like a savage. Why didn't you just like text a, him? I don't know. Oh, well, it was yeah. odd. She, I like, think you emailed James and I, and then I replied and said, "You had to add Jess." Because she wasn't. Yeah. I didn't have her email. I don't know how, why I didn't have her email, but well, that's you weird. never asked for it. Weird strategy. <laughs> you have my phone number. <laughs> uh huh. Anyway, you, you have about eighty-five ways of communicating <laughs> with me. You chose email, so I replied, hey, sounds good. Let's do that sushi thing. Nothing all day. Nothing, nothing. Which I totally understand. You guys were super swamped uh -huh. Wednesday, getting demo discs and everything done. And then I think like the afternoon, the next day, you guys said, so we're thinking about doing this. We're going to go on a hike and do all this we didn't magical stuff. That. You didn't go on the hike? Well, you Play were Owl saying Boy. that you didn't think you would be up for the hike, but you were kind of like, you're like, yeah, I like the idea of sushi. Well, yeah, because Jess was really in the idea of like eating sushi, but then you guys never got back, so we ended up just cooking at home. And then you didn't come over for that either, so I was like, again, well, they just hate us. Again, archaic method, but I think what happened was we took your saying, yes, I'm up for it, as a confirmation. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then we were like, all right, we'll just let you know when and where. Um, because there were also two other friends who don't have families <laughs> that, uh, that were interested in maybe joining us for that. But they hadn't confirmed. Mm -hmm. So we were going to do one big confirmation email and be like, here's the thing. Nobody but watching cares about this. Uh, I, I'm also in town most of the time, you guys. Who's that? There you go. Who said well, that? But your family's yeah. in Simi Valley. Didn't you go to your parents? You also don't for eat like meat. A, for like four hours. It'd just be uh, rice with rice on top. <laughs> That's <What>? good. Yeah. <laughs> it's about the company, James. Oh, sorry. Bruce, was your Thanksgiving as good <coughs> as watching this uh, gameplay of Owl Boy is? It was. It was uh, not as good as Owl Boy. Oh, oh no! Actually, no. no I, I enjoy seeing my family. So I did. A, I typically do a lunch with my dad and a dinner with my mom, and both of them were great. The food was amazing mm -hmm. uh, at both places. One we went out. The other one was uh, home cooked. Um, but I got to have a few Trump debates. Oh, oh boy! So that was exciting. Um, I got to do a few of those. Although that didn't bother me, like I don't. It's not one of those things that like we can all we can all talk about and still be friends afterwards. So it's yeah, like, yeah. who Jeez. cares? Um, Paul, uh, that should just be a standing rule that politics shouldn't be that, at the table. But during that's things where games. it is. That's the only place it exists. Yeah, I guess it, it, it's sort of you're just saying when you do that, you're like I want to argue. Well, who I, wants to fight? Fight me. Well, it's one of those things that like you me, kind grandma. of address the elephant in the room early on. So. Uh, so that's what we did. God. Yeah. So the rest of the night is just hell. No, 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 no. It well, wasn't. You get it wasn't. over it. it I was, think yeah. you get through. It. Once you get, once you break through that point, you're like, all right. Well, we have different opinions. Clearly. Yeah. And then you just move on to something else. Yeah. No, it was it was good. Um, and uh, and then let's see, what did I do? I did something Thursday night. I can't remember. Oh, I watched the Game Attack. Uh, oh, their their uh, Black Friday stream. Black Friday stream. And I, I watched. Were you I, waiting in line while you were watching? I no, absolutely not. I heard Craig, uh, Craig from Screw Attack was saying they were going to do a Black Friday gaming stream for people in line. Mm -hmm. Poster almost fell over. Um, oh, while they're waiting for <laughs> there it goes. Uh, that's about right. That's about right. That's a good metaphor. Yeah, for yeah. A game, for that for Screw Attack. Um, but um, <laughs> and I was like, oh, you know, like, I'll, I bet they're playing something fun. I'll be that. I turn I turn it on and I'm playing fucking Mario again. Yeah. Well, and Craig, I was like. Play something else. Play Craig, Battlefield. Craig's been doing a Mario Brothers three playthrough on his own channel, and Nintendo just content ID'd it. Nice. Oh, they did. <laughs> yeah, poor Craig. I was like, oh no. Well, God. so Craig, that's that was another thing. I was like, Craig's playing on his personal channel. They just played a like a they Mario game Mario. for their channel for yeah, their but, for Game Attack, mm -hmm. and then they're streaming it. But we find a lot of excuses to play Overwatch. Yeah, but we haven't we haven't put that on our channel in weeks. Yeah, yeah. I guess you know, so. You know why people love Mario, guys? It's wholesome. It's good. We, all, we Everybody can enjoy it. They do a stream. They know they can get every viewer watching it. Especially mm -hmm. Nintendo when they claim your video. <laughs> well, well, but you know, everybody can enjoy Mario, but not everybody can enjoy nudity in console gaming. Well, that's I, not that's true. Debatable. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I didn't, tell, I didn't know that was an ad read. Or, I, I, no, but yeah. I like the it segue. It was. Though. I like yeah. the segue. Not really interested in the ad. You're the queen of segues. I, I, I wish I was just doing this whole podcast on a segue. Yeah. Like how um, the owner died <laughs> going off, off a cliff. cliff. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, fuck it, this is my legacy. <laughs> <laughs> Rolled too close to the sun. Or the edge, I guess. Well, segue um, into it. Nudity in games. Yeah. But, uh, but also, yeah, I want to talk about segues after. I want to talk a little bit about the history of nudity in console gaming specifically. Because mm. we, as a channel, demo disc is like anything goes. Yep. Uh, we play a lot of games that have nudity in them. We played this strip club simulator last week that was like we were trying desperately to avoid the nudity. <laughs> um, but in terms of console gaming, like 
there was sort of a tipping point when the God of War franchise came out, where it was like, okay, now it's acceptable yeah. to have nudity in console games. Before that, there was like the odd exception, like the MX XXX. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> yeah. it was like gratuitous. It wasn't like yeah. It was like this is the nudity game. It was never like this is a game that has nudity. Sure, like Custer's Revenge. Sure. Too. Yeah. That's just a yeah. pixel dick. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it barely looks like a dick. Yeah, but I guess back then, even then, people were like, "Oh, well. yeah, that's it's provocative." Yeah, but then sure. na- now it's like Splatterhouse, Dante's Inferno, Dragon Age Inquisition, Le- even Leisure Suit Larry is, you know. That's uh, the, yeah. that was the game Dangling. my parents didn't want me to play. Really? Well, yeah, yeah, because they it's a sex game. They yeah, they knew it was a sex game. Oh, but they it, knew. it wasn't a sex game, was it? Yeah, it's a, I always the feel whole like goal it was like for him to get laid. But it was never actually like overtly. No, no, no. They don't like show the. I mean, sex. there's no penetration, but they, well, you the, see nudity again. Yeah. I'm saying the Nothing difference sex. between something like God of War. And Le- Le- well, God of War Leisure sex Suit Larry is yeah. that God of War is a story about a, a guy exacting revenge on the gods yeah. and battling through Mount Olympus and Pandora's box and all kinds of stuff like that. Also, at a certain point in the game, he bangs some chicks. <laughs> you know, like Leisure Suit Larry is ironically the opposite. It's about a guy who really wants to bang some chicks. And you have to find yeah. pieces of a receipt right. and piece them together, and then and then t- turn a phone back online and stuff like that to make it happen. Like it's funny. Um, do you Why guys... are we talking about nudity though? Oh, it's just in Does console it make you gaming. Uncomfortable? But is there uh, a list or well, something? My my que- well my question not really a list. I mean there are lots of games now that just feature nudity. It's I just, just if you can email me the list. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, I guess my question is: Do you guys remember your first encounter with nudity in gaming? Like like. Ooh, that's console good... gaming specifically. I, I mean, I, I was a, it wasn't nudity per se, but it was uh, DOA, Beach Volleyball. Oh. Um, and it was like, basically like, I had discovered that a video game could turn me on, which I had never seen before. Mm-hmm. And it was one of those things where the more that I, the more that I, so it really makes you struggle with what you find attractive and what, what you think you should be attracted to. Because I, I was always like, well, these are fake characters, and this is like mm. designed. It's probably designed by a man. Like it's <laughs> sort of strange, and like it's like it's like reading a comic book, or um, or something anime. like that, or anime that's like drawn, yeah, and specifically to give you a boner. Mm-hmm. And uh, DOA Beach Volleyball really made me question why, why and what I'm attracted to, and I will always be grateful to it because then I eventually settled on the fact that I was, in fact. Attracted to here's, a fake digital character. Here's yeah. the thing, Bruce. Jennifer Lawrence on the cover of uh, Seventeen magazine. She's just as fake as those DOA characters. All those photoshops. That is photoshops. Mm. Yeah. They changed her skin. They like changed her bust size. They mm. did all that stuff. Everything is manu- a manufactured. She's image. not even really Katniss Everdeen. <laughs> she just pretends. And Kasumi really listens when I talk. That's what I like. <laughs> so it's, it's funny. Girl. It's funny because for me, I played. De- the Dead or Alive fighting games. Oh, yeah, yeah. Way before there was a beach volleyball. And so it was just the f- it was just like the fighting game that was an alternative to Tekken hmm. um, or, or uh, <laughs> Virtua Fighter. And it had, but it also had breast physics. Mm-hmm. But they were just gratuitous and yeah. disgusting. And it mm-hmm. almost kind of like desexualized the game in a lot of ways because it was just like they you'd punch and it'd just go. <laughs> like they didn't know how boobs work and mm. they couldn't get it to look right at all. Well, it's a it's a commentary, James. The game's a commentary on sexuality. Exactly. Well, yeah. that's what I'm saying. The creator was a pervert. That's You're why right. when by the time it got to beach volleyball, I was like, oh, here are these weird plastic dolls. Mm. Like it almost felt less sexual hmm. because well, I, I had already witnessed the worst of them. Yeah, I, that makes I sense. I love the game Beach Spikers that came out on the GameCube. Have nudity? I think the PS2 it didn't have nudity, but it was mm. like. Uh, doubles female volleyball yeah. and they would embrace yes. erotically yes. after they scored a point. Okay. I played that shit out of that game. I played it so much. I remember that. Um, no. Oh. <laughs> I guess <laughs> not um. with the GameCube control. I guess uh, I guess my question is mostly that it seems like there is this this divide between what is acceptable on console and what is acceptable for PC. Mm. Because uh. it, it, it's weird because like stuff like Bethesda and banning nudes for console mods, mm. but they're not doing that for PC. Mm-hmm. And something like uh, a few weeks ago, a PSN user was suspended uh, for sharing a in-game screenshot of uh, an exposed female genitalia in Watch Dogs 2. So he he ended up being suspended for like a day, and then Sony contacted him and there's, was like, "There's female genitalia in Watch Dogs." Oh yeah, there's all, I guess there's all kinds <laughs> How of. How big nudity. is the labia? Well, I I, I didn't I didn't I check the get picture. Back into that game. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I wasn't hoping oh, that's where this conversation would creatures. go, um, but basically, this this user Goron two thousand, uh, cool username, 
he uh, he had his, his his account you know unsuspended after a day, but he he was technically in breach of PSN's terms of service, which is do not share anything that is vulgar, mm-hmm. essentially. Oh, okay, yeah. But it, it's just it's just so weird to me how it's, it's so like broad. Yeah. this is just sort of a thing that seems to be happening still in console gaming, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm wondering what it is if it's like consoles are still skewed more toward younger demographics or like. I'm, Why? I've always said, like, sexuality is one of those things where it's like, it is literally completely subjective what you think about it. Because, like, it's funny, they got they got banned for sharing that, but I remember I, I took a video from Uncharted 4 of Drake climbing on the back of his brother and just, like, oh, yeah. humping him. <laughs> That could be considered gratuitous <laughs> sure. in any number of ways. There could be like, like a shot of some woman in a game and it's just her exposed feet and someone yeah. goes, Don't, I, oh, can't, yeah. I can't yeah, look yeah. at that. Oh my God, yeah. I, I need to sling some yogurt on that. But, and it's like, <laughs> but then it's also like, it's like yeah. that's in the game. So why, why would someone be penalized for sharing well, something even, that's in the game? Even worse, he's using tools that are built into the system, right? Yeah. Was he using he's the, the PSN? share button, yeah. Yeah, yeah. have a motherfucking share button <laughs> built into the thing. That's that's kind of funny. It's like handing someone a loaded gun, and then they give you a ticket for firing it off. Yeah. You know, like, and it's got a really sensitive trigger. Like, well, don't and, fire and, it. And PlayStation's <laughs> allowing these games on their platform, so it's like they're okay with allowing these games on their platform, but you can't share. Don't tell anyone. An image, yeah. yeah. And that's that's kind of the weird part. And and uh, like in terms of how you know nudity is like a little bit more uh, prevalent in console gaming, I sort of have to wonder if it's because the audience has grown up. Like, well, yeah, uh, what, that's what know? I uh, what you said. Console versus PC. It strikes me as people think the PC gaming audience is more mature and typically older than the console gaming audience. I don't know if that's true, hmm. but that's I think the impression that most people get about console versus PC. But I have no idea if that's true. Yeah. Also, they yeah. just can't get away with that stuff on PC. Like people would revolt. Like at, and consoles, they're used yeah. to it. Maybe you have too much root level control in PC yeah. that yeah. like yeah. Maybe Maybe consoles back. are closed systems. So right. it's like, right. yeah, yeah. To a degree. Is yeah. the Bethesda thing with the console, is it that a Bethesda decision or a Sony decision? That's a Bethesda decision, decision that they decided that they would not allow nude yeah. mods Which for, I'm sure, for console gaming. I'm sure they made that decision after long, hard discussions with, uh-huh. with executives. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, executives. it's weird, too, because, and this is, this is the old, old argument, but you, you can drag it back up, but I still think it stands. The fact that if this guy had shared an image of like an amazing headshot, mm-hmm. like a no scope oh, yeah. headshot, or like in Gears of War, he cut someone in half with a saw, mm-hmm. and he did like three times in a row, like Can't no one would care. Yep, no one would care. That's not gratuitous at all. But I'm much more likely, surprisingly, but I'm much more likely to see a vagina by the end of this week than I am to cut a dude in half with a chainsaw. If you're Thus, lucky. in terms of societal, yeah, if I'm lucky, but yeah. um, hmm. but in terms of societal like grievances and grotesque things that should stand out amongst our society, shouldn't the cutting someone in half with a chainsaw be way more shocking? I know it is. I, I, it's, 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 it's a thing. I, but I've been I, trying to figure that one out for a while, why sexuality makes a lot of people uncomfortable, which I guess is just more of what you're exposed to. And this, this is... This is in no way a scientific analysis or anything. This is just my personal opinion on it. I think it's because violence is so fantastical. It seems so It seems so out of the realm of the ordinary to take a chainsaw and chop a monster in half. Mm-hmm. But then when you see tits, I agree. You, yep. it, it's too real. Yep. That's more real than mm-hmm. blowing a man's head off. That, that, that idea of you actually taking a gun and shooting someone in the head is so far beyond. Which in a way, I'm like, I'm actually kind of happier with that. It's nice that people are more, the, the idea of being sexually aroused is a little more disturbing than blowing someone's brain off because at least they know the difference between real life and mm-hmm. what's fake to some degree. I don't know. There, Doesn't it all go there. back to like religion though? Like the, the Puritans came over from Europe and decided like mm. Christian values and all that stuff and Europe is like, whatever, boobs are awesome. But well, violence is bad I mean, over there. Well, Maybe, I, but yeah. I don't know what that has to do with Nintendo I, Switch. Well, I think, <laughs> I think, I think, I think what you're saying though, you have to think about what prompted that kind of instigation in religion. It's easy to blame religion, but it's it's it makes more sense to say there's some sort of something inside us sociologically that cues us into developing organizations to monitor ourselves and our intents and the things that we think. This is how do. stupid we are as humans, 
we, we've learned a long time ago, if you want someone to desire something, the best thing you can do is take it away from them. Yeah. So you can't do cocaine, people are gonna do cocaine. You can't do drugs, you can't drink, prohibition, all these things, all these things that don't work. And so when you tell people don't look at nudity, we tell a bunch of kids, ignore, ignore uh, porno mags, ignore all this stuff, they're just gonna seek it out. And like, it's a curious thing because, I don't know. It's I'm, a societal glitch into tricking people to fucking? Kind of, maybe, hmm. I don't know. It, it's like, you, you will never accomplish what you want by being straight, being forward, forward with it. When you express your intentions outright and say, this is bad, people will find a way around it. That's just how we are, that's how we're programmed as. You want what you, you can't have. Exactly, yeah. and that's, that's how it's always gonna be, so. Yeah. And like, I, I don't know if I could do this as a parent, but it seems like the smartest thing you could do is just expose your children to a lot of nudity early on. But that might even fuck that <laughs> done up. Done and done. Just walk around, walk around <laughs> yeah. naked all the time. This is my dick, son. They're, they're, Get used yeah. to it. I There's a fine a, line. Yeah, I think I think that's really smart. But I also think that's really smart to get a head start on your Christmas shopping. Adam. <laughs> you know, because because the we're thinking about the kids here. And what do kids love? Viol viol nudity. Neat. Steaks. Oh, okay, all right. Steaks it. Uh, so if, if you're looking for the perfect gift, then let me tell you about Omaha Steaks and how for only $49.99, you can get the family gift pack when you go to omahasteaks.com and enter the code DUDE in the search bar. That's 77% off. You're gonna get great steaks at home with tender aged beef and you'll seafood and poultry and pork and veal and lamb. And it's, it's a one of a kind flavor you can only find here. Um, and right now Omaha Steaks is giving an exclusive saving, savings just to you guys, our listeners. So this is everything that you will get for less than $50, okay? Two filet mignons, two top sirloins, two boneless pork chops, four boneless chicken breasts, four kielbasa sausages, four burgers, 12 ounce package all beef meatballs, four potatoes au gratin, au gratin uh, four caramel apple tartlets, one Omaha steak seasoning packet, plus you'll get four additional kielbasa sausages free. That's under $50? That's what this says. What the <laughs> hell? Yeah, so uh, uh, this is a, uh, how Only with our exclusive savings. So if uh, yeah, if you go to omahasteaks.com and enter our code DUDE in the search bar, then add the family gift pack to your cart, you'll get that 77% savings. And that's that's a great gift. Like maybe we chip and we get Bruce. Bruce is a great boss. Bruce, we you want to make some meat? I love meat. Yeah, and then Bruce is like, well, I just got myself a new TV. Oh, but, yeah. uh, that's not my TV. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah. You don't know me. <laughs> um, but but back on on the subject of like if, gaming if, if you want it to happen, like you were saying, Adam, if somebody wants it to happen, they will make it happen. That's kind of what's been happening with Nintendo porn on Tumblr. What? And if, you, going on for years. if you'll all recall, back in July, I will. <laughs> uh, the big N was targeting a bunch of Tumblrs with DMCA's. Me? Okay. Oh, really? Uh, because of Princess Peach erotica, like. Oh, First, that was that Such was that was basically, and 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 we thought that 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 was done, but now Nintendo's back on the warpath, attacking our Zelda erotica. No, what? our tumblers are not safe. Does that include uh, gay stuff between Link and Ganondorf? <laughs> you can just say stuff know. between Link and Ganondorf. <laughs> um, the, you know, there's some argument in the Neo Gaff community as to whether this is just for Nintendo to defend their copyrights. I don't know if they're just being like. You know, have sticks up their butt, whatever. They're, they're, they're being brave. Well, it sounds like Peach is the one who has a stick up oh their butt. Oh my god. <laughs> you, you, but that's the thing um, is, you can't stop this stuff. But the minute you tell someone, hey, don't do that, more, it, yeah. no one goes, more of it. you're right, I should stop doing this. Now all of a sudden, now you've given them a mission. Yeah, cause. Now, yeah. now all of a sudden, it's good it's versus taboo. evil. Yep. Yeah, it, it's a weird thing where Nintendo can't publicly do this but they should just count their blessings that their product is so popular mm -hmm. that people want to draw yeah. it with things in Yeah, if they didn't make so many hot <laughs> characters, we wouldn't be drawing them so much. <laughs> yeah, it's right? We've been begging fault. for, this is our problem. We've been begging for more Funhouse erotica mm -hmm. art. But the, and, and we don't get it because, we don't get we, very because, much because it. it's not taboo in our community. Oh yeah, yeah. that's true. I mean, yeah, my, uh, this is this just all ties into this whole console That's gaming stupid. nudity discussion. Like, it's it's got to change, you guys. I think it's a good barometer to know whether your product is going to succeed or fail. Remember how much porn was coming out for Overwatch before it came out? Oh, oh yeah. 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 Oh, I, bet, I know. I know. Blizzard was sort of like, "That's kind of weird," uh, but someone there was smart enough and said, "We got ourselves a hit." Yeah. Because yeah. Tracer is shoving her gun so far up Widowmaker's <laughs> ass. The champagne pops, <laughs> and then the cork goes right into her butt. Yeah. Oh. Draw that. <laughs> I, um, I don't know. Yeah, they're just just be happy if your what, game has porn. I'm curious what other games do, what other games can you guys think of that have full blown nudity? 
in it. Uh, wait, doesn't... Uh, David so Cage games do. Yeah. Hot Coffee was the first thing I thought of that was like... There's no nudity, though. But there's no nudity, right? No, it's just... It's just a sex scene. It's... it's That whole thing's so stupid. Because I, I remember Hot Coffee being a big deal, and I didn't have GTA at the time, yeah. but a lot of my friends were like, you gotta see this! So well, like, they, if they if they were probably like, you gotta see this, and then they showed you a video online because they couldn't get it working on their own game. Yeah, no, because I well, remember that being a problem, too. Well, so... <laughs> it, 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 they found it because it was on PC. Mm -hmm. So someone dug through the code. Oh, okay. The code. They did the whole. Uh, what do you call it when you the I don't know meta dive or whatever the hell it's called. Oh, like when they dig into like meta basically data? all, all the, the XML yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, it has, yeah. it has a name. I forget what it's called. Either data mining. Data. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. And they're they're going through it and they found this thing called hot coffee and they unlocked it and so the people got upset because they got it to work on PC or on console. Because it was a port, yeah, and they found out that it was hidden in the code, and people use like a Game Shark, or it was I think it was an action replay at the time, whatever it was. They found a way of essentially hacking the game, and so Rockstar got in trouble because that was still in the game. Right. But if you know anything about game development, you to take you can't just take a thing out. So clearly they were working on a sex mini game, and they said, eh, it doesn't really work, or right. uh, this is stupid, it's dumb, or I mean they're just grinding on each other's clothes, so they took it out. But people were really upset that how dare they keep this thing in. Mm -hmm. I was like, there's no nudity. It's just two things. I mean, yeah. this is how me and my Christian girlfriend got it on in high school. Like you like, can see, you sad. can see a thumbnail. It's basically you. One of the many characters you can date. Yeah. Eventually, you get to a point where you can ask them back to your place. And oh, okay. It takes you to an interior of the bedroom, and then whatever she was wearing in that like date, mm -hmm. she's basically wearing in the sequence, and then it's just like, eh. So like yeah. she doesn't really get naked yeah. or anything. No, I, I unless there's a way to glitch her into being naked. She's not naked. It's just you would have too, to mod it. You'd like eh, 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 and then it would like change positions. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't know. No. I just remember that being like a big, big yeah. deal. It was. Well, the yeah. media oh, yeah. went, went crazy. It was for very it. much blown out of proportion. You know what else was a big deal? Oh, Last night's so. episode of Westworld. <laughs> and I want, I want to get to that because I know Bruce wants to talk about what it. What show are sure. we on that you got to move through topics so quick? I, I, I have so many topics. There's I have so, so much, much to say. We can talk about. <laughs> I, I, I just, before we get to Westworld, I want to talk about... Not a lot of nudity in Westworld last night. There, there wasn't. Was did Thandy Tandy Newton get naked? No, I don't even. I don't even know background. anymore. There's a significant <laughs> lack of bush. I can't even tell when There's she's. There's people in the background always naked. Oh, yeah. I want to be on one of those shows. Sitting there naked. I just want to be in the background as someone's testing my knees, completely naked. So there's just a guy, and they're like, "All right, Thandy Newton's going to be doing a scene about." 50 feet away from you, mm -hmm. you're going to be in the background completely naked. The guy's just going to hit your knees and you just need to kick your knees. I hope that Anthony Hopkins turns out to be a. Uh, We're going to see a, Anthony a, Hopkins. Hold on, yeah. hold on. I hope he's so, a host. Spoiler. Should we preface this yeah, with a spoiler? Oh, yeah, there's a big, big spoilers in There's West a lot World. of people who haven't pirated the episode yet. Big spoilers. But you know, it shouldn't be that annoying. surprising to you. What? It's a show about who is real and who is not. Which almost doesn't really matter. And it really doesn't matter at a certain point, but uh, the show is slowly more... It's kind of like Battlestar Galactica, oh, that's... only without with less of the, I think, fanfare, mm -hmm. maybe over some of the mystery. Yeah. Um, well, the thing with Battlestar was they, they kept you interested. They were doing kind of the lost thing where they said the question is more important than the answer for mm -hmm. a while, and they kept asking, well... They, they started to reveal, oh, this guy, this character you knew all this time is now a Cylon, mm -hmm. and that changes everything. Wow. It was never really clear what the difference was because in that show they were basically just humans, mm -hmm. but they had some programming in there. It was all very unclear. Um, either way, in this show, someone can be a robot, and it doesn't really matter. And yeah. Go, okay. Which is the better? Cool. Which is a more interesting question to ask? Yeah. If you've made if you've made something, if someone has created something that's so so just fully convinces you of its humanity. What is the point of comparing what is inside you versus what is inside it? Is it a robot? Is oh yeah. At what point have you just created right. humanity? Mm -hmm. um, and what what about us and organic material make it so much more yeah. impressive? What is love? What is love? What is love? Um, and the cool thing about Westworld is that it continues to reveal certain characters and stuff and certain elements to be uh, artificial. After you've ar after they've already proven themselves to be way more human than people you know in your yeah, daily well, life. Yeah, that's that's the thing is like they're they're hosts on that show that display a lot more human attributes in terms mm -hmm. of like caring for other individuals than like Anthony Hopkins character yeah. seemingly does, yeah. or the Man in Black seemingly does. Well, this like, this series has really gotten me 
which I've never done before because this, this question is posed in a lot of different sci-fi and it has been for years and years and years about like, oh, is a robot you know, that is sentient, yeah. is that artificial intelligence, are they, are they a human now? Or do, yeah. do they deserve the same rights? Is the soul real? Right. All, the, all that stuff. And for me, it's actually got me putting myself into the robot's shoes, into the host's shoes, mm. because I start asking myself, what would happen if like, I woke up and I found out that basically it's like the Truman Show, where I woke up that everything around me was orchestrated and it was all fake. What would I do? Which is really interesting to put myself into the robot shoes and be like, well, shit, what, how would I feel? Mm -hmm. And I would feel terrible. I'd feel like, I'd feel like basically, like, like they said, my whole life is a lie. Well, it's sort of like the plot of Groundhog Day, except everyone is aware of it. So yeah. imagine yeah. all the people walking around the town are going, Oh, he'll forget tomorrow, and they just stab you and go, "Ha ha, fuck you!" That's so Walk weird. Away. And then, and even worse, they paid for that experience. Man, it's so yeah. it's, what, it's such an interesting question that you have to put yourself into the into the robot shoes rather than into the human shoes. Because I feel like the humans are almost more one dimensional than the robots are in the show. Well, what I like about the show is that uh, they have characters, hosts that are sentient and still interacting with non-sentient characters, and I like when they just blow their mind. Oh, yeah. Or like, it'll go directly from a scene with one character who knows everything that's going on, is completely aware of it, and is trying to manipulate it for their own benefit, or doing something, or they have an objective, a goal, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it'll cut to another scene with James Marston's character, who, boy oh boy, he is just a chess piece, yeah. just thrown around, yeah. just constantly abused, and like, like to see the expression on his face when he like someone's like no, none of this matters yeah. <laughs> like just like yeah. cuts his head off or whatever and he's just and, like I'm and, sad and, and the, the show did such a funny thing with him because to the viewer they give the initial impression of this is your the hero this is your yeah. hero and now now he is just, just yeah like you said that he's just just a piece of meat like I feel so cool. bad I feel so even, bad for him even things like that he re wrestles with it's physical like things that he's dealing with like pain and punishment and stuff like that mm. but even stuff like things he wrestles with mentally and emotionally, like there's literally points where Anthony Hopkins' character is like, mm, better mess with this code, yeah. like gives him a memory of him doing some sort of something horrible, yeah. which he's never done, <laughs> but it's real now. It has yeah, basically him, become so. real yeah. to him, and he's like, yeah. Oh, now I have to get over this. He's like, <laughs> yeah. You didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. You didn't even. Do I, that. I love how like all the human care or the the people we assume are humans, like Anthony Hopkins, Teresa. Uh, you know, McPoyle in black, and oh, yeah. and they all they all don't really have any like moral quandaries. No, whereas because all they're robots. The ro all the robots are like, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah. like yeah. <laughs> what am I like? I shouldn't be doing this. Like, oh, yeah. this isn't it, that good. It makes you ask that weird question to yourself, which I guess people do in video games. Like, so Dishonored is a good example where they give you a moral compass. They literally give you, they like rate you yeah. at the end where you lie of like oh, chaotic right. neutral and right. all this stuff. Um, when you play a game, are you is it, are you going to live out your fantasy of just murdering everyone and being an asshole? Or are you going to try to be helpful and be a good person? And so if this place actually existed, what kind of person would you be? And it, more, more times than not, I think most people turn into killing rapists or like murderous rapists because, hey, there's no consequences for what you're doing here. But it's sort of like, could you live with yourself you know, after that? Well, that's the, it's, it, that's the thing that I always find semi-hard to believe in these sorts of shows is that like, at least with Westworld, they gave McPoyle a pretty good character arc. Uh, is, 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 <laughs> is William? Is William? Right? He plays, yeah, or Billy. Yeah, McPoyle or Billy. Black. Uh, yeah. Don't call him Billy. Yeah, uh, he, he's he's taken three or four, five. I think maybe five episodes to sort of to sort of turn bad. Hmm. And I appreciated. Do you that. think he turned bad? Well, I mean, like he no. he's getting there. He, he took action. He took action and like I mean against he, the people that wronged him. I well, would say well, he's but he, no, he who just, he also was able to admit doesn't necessarily have control over. And like, he also like he, he basically mutilated a bunch of robots, and like he did that because I think, like at, at this point in the show, I felt like he was experimenting, whereas before he was like, well, no, like like you said, he's like, well, I kind of want to be a good guy, and like mm. this is the way I live my life, so I'd like to play it this way. Um, well, because they gave him a, a taste of something, and then they took it away. Yes, and then and now now he's like gone crazy basically. Yeah. Um, so that's to me. I'm just saying, good guy, bad guy, in the sense that before he was trying not to kill anything, and now it doesn't matter. So you guys. So the the big theory right now is that William, Billy, and Ed Harris are the same person. Yeah. Right. And those are two different timelines happening. 
the character Dolores is going through, and those are all memories. Now there are three She's timelines. There are three. Three. What's the third? So, Dolores going to the church. Mm-hmm. That is the second timeline. Her with her being with Billy William is the second timeline. The first timeline takes place five years before that, where she is with Arnold doing all the the one on ones. Mm-hmm. So like I I'm pretty sure if you go back and you watch a lot of the the scenes with her talking to Bernard Arnold. Like Bernard. his hair is a little bit more gray in places, right. and he he looks a little bit different. And I think those are supposed to be the the timeline where it's like five years before, or he's still alive. It's, so is Arnold? So that's actually Arnold then. That's that's the theory that I would keep seeing is that that is actually Arnold that she is having those conversations with, not Bern Arnold. I guess you have um, to go back and watch again because they did, made a big point of showing off his shoes. Yeah. So apparently his shoes are different when he's when he's Bernard versus Arnold. So like really? he, has a, he has a different voice so, too, which was sort of the, the heartbreaking scene there's, yeah. last night when they're doing the whole thing where he makes him hold the gun to his head. Yeah. And when he calls, when he says Lord. Richard, he calls for him. He's using Robert. the Arnold voice yeah. instead of. Oh, Robert. Yeah. Or it says Robert. What yeah. did I say? Richard. It doesn't Richard, matter. Richard. Yeah. We know what you meant. Ford. <laughs> Robert Ford. It was, but it's like his voice change, and I was like, oh God, which is just. Great acting on the show and good writing. And I don't know. I, I didn't expect the show to be this good. It's really I kept, good. I kept waiting for it to go. Eh, all right, they tried. It's an expensive flop. It's a dumb thing. But end, every episode I watch, I like. You know, it's good. Robert Ford killed Jesse James. The coward, Jesse James. Hmm. Oh yeah. The coward was Robert Ford. You're a coward. <laughs> Jesse James, everyone loved. Read about sticks. Robert Ford, <laughs> cowboy. Hmm. There's a lot of parallels there. <clears throat> uh, there's a, there, there's a lot of allusions too to like. Um, he keeps saying that line from Shakespeare. Yeah, Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, yeah, the name Juliet keeps coming up. There's a there's a lot of, it's it's very much in your face, but no, but it's really I mean like that's it, that's what that's fun. what the, it's the, a fun show. To no, watch. it's fun. I I have no problems with the show. I, yeah, I, I, I don't do it. the things though where I go watch an episode and go, oh, let me just figure out what theories are. I don't either. I I like to not necessarily even develop my own theories. I just like to let it wash over me. Yeah, I like to think about it. I just really? wait for Elise to tell me all the theories. Yeah, yeah. I know Elise has been telling me. Elise, where have you been going for all your I theories? I go Reddit. I Same. go Reddit. I tr- so, okay. We probably like had conversations like Westworld fan number thirty six. <laughs> I'm thirty five. Like, oh, yeah. that's you. I um, that's that's so I don't subscribe to the Westworld subreddit, but I I don't will, either. I will go to it. Same with like Halt and Catch Fire. Oh yeah, yeah. The the water cooler has become digital, <laughs> and that is sort of just how we consume media now where it, everything goes beyond. I mean, Jess did the same thing. She watched all of Gilmore Girls uh, last night and then immediately went online of like, oh my God, what does this ending mean? Which for rational people like you and I, well, I mean, we like, went, okay. So it's funny, like it, it ended for me because I watched it too with Bethany. <laughs> and uh, and I, I, by the way, I was a Gilmore Girls fan from the very yeah, beginning. Yeah. I watched it when it was on. Um, and so when it was at the very, very end, Hipster. Uh, I'm just letting you know. I, don't. I think it's the opposite of hipster. I'm not, I'm not jumping on the bandwagon. Um, the uh, the very end of the show hit me, and I like I got I was like, yep. And I got up and like went to start putting my laundry away, and Bethany's crying on the couch. <laughs> and I was like, what? 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 What are you crying about? And and she's like, <laughs> so we started to look up the uh, the ending and why. Um, and like there are a bunch of different theories and all did, this other did stuff. Did the original series was it just canceled or what? Yeah, I believe it apparently was just canceled. the last season wasn't very good because the creator left. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. And then it sort of ended, but it got this. But it was on for a long time. It was right? on for seven, seven seasons. seasons. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I know. It didn't. Just, it was. It was like a, cycles. They prefer to <laughs> cycles. <laughs> <laughs> Jess and I were at a bar and Castle was on. Oh, oh, Castle. I think Castle. Is that on season 14? Castle's I was going to say, I think it's terrible. been on for 16 seasons. Castle's He's an author. And, so bad. And it's like, so there's Nathan Fillion, who I think we know, yeah. but then there's female lead, oh, yeah. who I've never seen in anything else. It's like the main guy from How I Met Your Mother. Ne- nothing else. <laughs> no one wants him. Yeah. Probably one of the most popular shows in the world. Ted? T- What's his real name? Actor. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ted. That's the rub. But uh, that's the character, right? I don't know. I don't think that's Ted Mosby, right? That Castle a, Castle's yeah. a procedural, and sure. and, it, and so it's one of those things where it's like probably one of the most popular shows in the world. I know why people watch it because it's the same thing. Every well, it's yeah, yeah. That's like Bones. I mean, and people Bones. like Bones, Bones is a procedural. Like, I don't, right? I don't get it. Can I tell you guys? I will saw they, something recently they? I that care. I thought was a joke. Uh, Hulu has a new series starring Hugh Laurie, and it's called oh, yeah. Chance. And Hugh, Hugh Laurie plays. Uh, Dr. Eldon Chance. No. And he's a forensic neuropsychiatrist who is like 
no. conflicted. I, I swear to God. No. And, she was like, she saw I, the thing on the Hulu. I was like, that a joke? I was like, I don't know. I was like, that fucking real? Like, there's no way. And it, it, it is it's real. It's not a parody or anything? Nope. That's, no that's way. That's what I thought it was. Gregory yeah. Chance no is way. Chance, 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 Dr. Chance. Wait, hold yeah. on, hold on. So what he is plays he, by his own rules. What does he do? He, please tell me <laughs> he's not he's not diagnosing like weird. Well, you see, he uses a cane. But that's his Chance. Right hand. There it is. <laughs> well, that's House had a beard. So that's not, not really. Him. No, he never. He didn't really. Yeah, have, he had some stubble. It's yeah. yeah. Are you See? kidding me? Doesn't look the same. <laughs> <laughs> they made this show. This is the show. Oh, he's that... in a wheelchair and chance. <laughs> Sorry, what are you saying? Well, no, I was gonna say like whenever there was a popular show, there was always like the ripoff version yeah. of said show. But he's in it. But there he did. He's in it. There this are... is this is the same guy. <laughs> years later, <laughs> what? There are <laughs> casting people. Working their butts off in this town, yeah. in in Hollywood, there are people casting agents. They are the, some of the hardest, some of the most talented people in an entire production. I would agree. Where yeah. you're like, everything about this was terrible, except for who was cast. Yeah. Then there's other casting agents who are literally asleep all day. <laughs> I worked at that. And they one. go, Were oh, you? Yeah, right. Right. Were you House? We got a show called Chance. <laughs> You be Chance. You like house, you are house now, Chance. Wait, you know who else is incredibly hardworking? The company that makes movement watches. Yeah, they were just agree. They were just a group of guys that came out of nowhere and started their own watch company. And that's that's pretty impressive. Uh, movement watches, they start at just $95. And at a department store, you're looking at $400, $500 for this quality of watch. Um, but they sell them online, so they cut out the middleman and they and they bring that, that price down. And uh, so they're our sponsor today. And... Uh, you can get 15% off with free shipping and free returns by going to movementwatches.com slash dudesoup. And uh, it's a really clean design. I People tweeted at me and asked me about my Beverly watch, which I really love. Your um, name is Elise. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, so like if you want to step up your watch game, please go to movementwatches.com slash dudesoup and use our code and join the movement with us. That's James. James, I like, I like that watch for you. <laughs> Watch. Nice. It was nice because I was wondering how much time is left on this podcast. I went, now you know. Hey, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, I live a good while doing it. Uh, daylight savings. But we, thank you, Movement Watches. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we were discussing that too, uh, the whole casting thing. We were talking about, I think, Alien 4 or Aliens 4. Oh, yeah. Alien Resurrection? Alien Resurrection. Four it's called Resurrection. Yeah. Yeah. Alien Resurrection. Yeah. Because the, that poster came out for Alien Covenant. We're like, interesting. Yeah. I wonder. I don't know. But we were, I think we were all discussing. I think we were talking about it. I forget. I don't know. But we were talking about how. Yeah. A, a, a studio will see a movie like Amelie, and they're like, wow, oh, yeah. oh, right. fresh yes. of breath there. Yeah. Oh my God, I can't believe, we need to get this guy for Alien. And then they get him in there like, make it like Aliens. <laughs> and the guy's like, what, why did you hire me? Yeah. I make French. Amelie. Yeah, I make the Amelie. He's like, I, I can make the, the Amelie. Yeah. So he goes, I got the wheelchair guy. <laughs> well, he, then he gets into there and he's smoking a really long cigarette and he goes, did you know that the story of the alien is not too different from the story of mother and child? You know? They said, shut the fuck <laughs> up and make like, aliens! No, we want them to shoot the aliens. <laughs> I see, I see, yes. Well, I won't tell the mother and child story. <laughs> yeah. here's, a, here's a stooge. He's going to co-direct with you. Like, One okay. woman alone in the universe. Yeah. Like, because well, she is the godmother, I call her. Yeah, I like, Where do they put the alien that looks like a human? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always just an odd thing because they say, I want a thing that looks like this, but do this instead. But yeah. are we all not the alien, though? Yeah. No? <laughs> no, we're not. They have acid yeah. for blood. Anyway, he didn't come back for five. <laughs> yes, no but did. if you prick me, do I not bleed acid as well? <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> but it burns through my heart. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think, Passion. Do you think Alien Covenant's gonna suck? I don't care. I thought it was Ridley. <laughs> is Ridley Scott producing or directing? Neil Blanc Neil, Neil Ridley Neil Scott Blancon? does whatever, man. Still attached to it? What? Is Neil Blancon still attached so. to it? No. Oh wait, hold on. I'll, I, I, he only, I can look it up. He here. only wants to make movies. He's, I think he's credited as getting coffee for Ridley Scott. <laughs> Scotty Riddles. <laughs> Let's um, sounds like a disease. Scotty riddles. <laughs> he's just riddled with Scotties. I think. I think. Oh, he Ridley's, saved. Ridley Scott is a great director, <coughs> but he's also not really a director that ever says no. It's true. He doesn't. He kind of <laughs> just like, yeah, I'll make it, yep. which is cool. Yeah. Steven Spielberg does that a lot too. Mm -hmm. But like, like Ridley Scott pi actually very pioneered a strategy of filmmaking that. Lowers the cost of some of a film that would be otherwise mm -hmm. really insane. Set up seven and, cameras. Yeah, he go. he pioneered the film and action yeah. scene once. You only have would, to blow up the carriage once. We'll just set up seven cameras. Build your panopticon. And panopticams. We'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll figure it out in post. He saw yes. the Matrix and said, "All shots should be that." <laughs> yeah. Um, 360 degrees. This GQ forever. article has an awesome title. Ridley Scott learned his lesson. Will put aliens in his next alien movie. Smart man. So he's directing it. That was the so problem. He is. Yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. People are talking about this. 
Fuck you, GQ. The problem with Prometheus is that it was trying to tie itself too much to aliens. Yeah. If he had just made there. a cool, weird sci-fi movie, it would have been fine. Well, it didn't. It was need... the whole last act of the movie where they're like, oh, aliens! I forgot. Yeah. Like, it, it didn't need the aliens at the end of the movie. It, the either GQ way, guy very... doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Either way, it wasn't very good. It wasn't. No, so. but that was not a problem. The lack of aliens in it was not a problem. <laughs> I always want to like Prometheus, and I can't. No, you, if you, you can't. put it on mute, yeah. I feel yeah. like well, if you gorgeous. put it on, yeah. if we had just had it great. on the background, people would go amazing. It's yeah. like. Really amazing. The production design of that movie is fantastic. Idris Elba is Idris Elba, but he's great. Mm. I believe it was shot in 3D, I think. Oh, yeah? What's the like problem with Idris Elba? What? No, no, we like Idris Elba. No, he's, fine. he's great. He's just yeah. only Idris Elba. He was basically the purest form of Idris it, Elba. It's a weird thing. Imagine if some point in your life you were driving your car and you said, I'm going to crash into this pole right now. And you're like, why are you doing that? I don't know. Some voice in my head just told me to do it. Yeah. Those were the characters in Prometheus. Because <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. there's the part where there's the three shipmates. And like, let's kill ourselves in this really expensive ship. Like, you got it, boss. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? No. They probably would have been like, let's get the fuck out of here and go home. No one did anything that made any sense. Yeah. Which is sucks because the universe they built is so interesting and cool. But then it, they were just a slave to this terrible... So that's the reason it looks so good. It was actually shot in 3D. It's one of the very few movies that was shot with 3D cameras. So if you saw it in 3D, it was amazing. And I did. I saw it twice yeah. in 3D. It's just, it just, uh, looks, yeah, just looks good. Uh, like, it looks yeah, really good. I, I take solace in that at least this maybe inspired Ridley Scott for the, the space suits that he made for The Martian. Yes. Oh, you know, so you got that really they cool, props. yeah, really cool mm -hmm. design. They, they even forgot Matt Damon was in Interstellar. They, said, <laughs> they just <laughs> drove from one set to the other and said, "Can you play that role again?" Yeah, they Scotty Riddle said, "We need a big walkie blocky well, guy." That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Scott Riddle, he knows how to save money on set. They yeah. paid Matt Damon once. For <laughs> what? He didn't know it was two different movies. <laughs> Wait, Ridley, he didn't know. Ridley Scott had nothing say, to do with Interstellar, though. He, no, well, he no, know that. but he just he <laughs> talked to Christopher Nolan. Oh, and he said, he said. Can we just borrow him for for uh, nine weeks? Oh, yeah. gotcha. And then Christopher We're Nolan was like, uh, "Sure." And they just said, "Matt, like, they we're just... gonna be shooting you for <laughs> ten weeks." <laughs> they just loan much. out Matt Damon like the old classic Hollywood studio system. Yeah, exactly. Oh, but no, right. no one knows who owns him. Though. He's basically a horse. <laughs> yeah. I, I had one of my greatest movie experiences. I think when we saw Bruce and I saw Prometheus, we went like with a group, and the very first shot they show uh, Charlie Theron, she's like doing push-ups. She's mm -hmm. all sweaty. Yeah. And this guy goes. I've got a big bone right now. Someone goes, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and then he didn't talk for the rest of the movie. <laughs> I was like, thank you. I love that. I love that too. This that's that's a great moment in this movie well, you where know what? she wakes up from hyper sleep. Oh yeah. She's goes, like, she's I'm like, aroused. better do push-ups. <laughs> Either way, I fucking hate people in the movie theaters. Yeah, I can't well, wait till we all wear headphones. You know what? I had a boner watching. Moana. You've been trying to bring that up. You fell asleep. Been, I had this trailer. <laughs> you were asleep. So Bruce, yeah. I fell asleep only for the the, the lobsters, the crabs. The crab. The, the crab. That's They're it. one of the best songs in the whole fucking yeah. movie. Well, we were going to go see it again. Too shiny. There's a great, I mean, the music was actually really good. And I didn't know there was music in the movie. I should have known that. Yeah. But I didn't it's, know that. They so. made a big deal about this because um, that one guy died of AIDS. And they said, we got the guy from Hamilton. Oh. Yeah. Oh, he was okay. on AIDS Watch. No, I don't know. He's <laughs> married and seems like a nice dude. <laughs> well, it's that. interesting because they, I guess they had been working on the music for a really long time. So, it, like, Hamilton, I guess, exploded after he was attached to this project. Oh, that's cool. So I guess Disney was just like, someone went and was like, this, this Hamilton good. thing is going to be huge. Yeah. This is going to be great. we got to get this guy, you know. Um, huh. But, yeah, the, it's Moana is the most classic Disney movie I think I've seen in the last two decades. It's Princess wonderful. and the Frog came close, but then kind of went off the rails in the second half of that movie. So it's, it's from John Musker and Ron Clements, who are the team that did Great Mouse Detective, Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Hercules, Treasure Planet, Princess and the Frog, and Moana. And this is their first digital yeah, this okay. is film. Computer. I like some of those. It's, um, it's all very, 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 very Disney. I don't remember where this was said, if it was just a joke I made in my head or someone actually said this, but Jess was working at Disney at the time when Princess and the Frog came out. Mm -hmm. And somewhere someone said, finally, we're going black to 2D animation. I said, what? Back to 2D animation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was well, sort of like this weird, subtle, like racist thing where they were trying to make a big deal. Like, we made a black princess. Like, just be happy you made a movie. Like, <laughs> weird. So and then I, they made her a frog for 70% of the movie. <laughs> that's like, what I didn't understand yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, like nice, this yeah. nice confidence. And they leave New Orleans, which is so that's, cool, and they go to the swamp, which God. is like, <laughs> I saw Prince of the Frog alone and I was really excited just because I was like, oh, 2D, there's so many other like computer yeah. animated movies. Yeah. Now we got a 2D, Disney's doing a 2D movie. 
and a black princess. Like, and then and then you go in and you're watching the movie. Oh, the begin- first half of that movie is just like so good. You're mm. like, oh man, look at this beautiful, vibrant yeah. world. Her song that she sings when she's sweeping up her place because she's going to open oh, a restaurant. Could she sweep. It's so good, such a good song, so stylized and everything. Then she gets turned to a, into a frog and then sent into the swamp. <laughs> and I was like, what Thanks. the fuck happened to all so that? I, I was reading a bit about the animation and they were gonna try to do a hybrid hybrid technique on Moana, which was like, mm. it's called Meander and it's it's animation and like digital. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. But they kind of scrapped that. They they still did all the the, Ma- the scenes with Maui's tattoos. That that's all hand drawn. Oh, that, that's like cool awesome. sequence. It, yeah. You know what? It, yeah. Well, now they think that, about they it. Just yeah. Took a picture well, of the rock. <laughs> Maui Maui has a song. It's basically his genie song. That's good. Um, which is really catchy. But yeah. there's a sequence in it that it's like almost like that. There's the it's the computer generated characters on top of a what appears to be two dimensional background. Yeah. I wonder if that's yeah. Kind well, of what it, they're... Paper Man, that short, that was that meander technique. Mm. That was oh, where okay. they that was where they developed it or implemented it, and then mm-hmm. they were like, "We should try to do a feature out of this." It's like cell shaded, almost. I told this to you guys after we saw it, but I, my favorite thing about Moana was I the sex scene. I just loved <laughs> her as as a character. I wish this was kind of the movie that came out when I was a kid, because it's the the the. I don't want to spoil any of this for Adam or Omar that are watching, but like that. That the girl Moana in it, like, she's she's good at what she does. She's not a fuck up. It's not like her parents are saying, Moana, you need to learn how to mm-hmm. how to be a chief to be a, a tribe leader. She's really good at it. She just has other aspirations, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I think that's that's a really really great message to get serious. Well, that, from that was the thing. So we watched uh, Little Mermaid over the weekend just because I think Jess was just singing it. <laughs> we're like, yeah, oh, screw it, let's just watch it. It's a short movie. Um, and just kind of had the realization, it's an old movie. It's like, mm-hmm. what, 20, 25 years old, something like that? Very yeah. old. Um, it's a very antiquated movie. But the whole movie, she's talking about how, like, oh, if only I can get out from my father's thumb. If I can just get out, yeah. get out there to the world. Yeah. Then she sees Prince Eric goes, I want to marry that man and never leave the yeah. castle. Yeah. Yeah. Go from, like, like, my father's weird. thumb to my husband's thumb. Yeah, I just need an, I need to replace one man with another. And I was yeah. like, it, I, I mean, I maybe we've, Progress a little bit, and it was like, okay, that seems very one-dimensional. Also, it's an old fantasy story and all that Moana stuff. Moana is awesome about that, and and this is a piece I of trivia. Like they tried that with Brave, right? She was yeah. And Brave, was really the problem bad. is it made the character in, insufferable. Yeah, yeah. And Brave, and they they made it so that way. Moana does a good thing straddling that her parents have the best intentions for her, and want her, and and utterly believe in her and her capabilities of doing whatever she wanted to do. And and know that she will be great, but she wants something else. Well, they're very protective you know? of her. They don't want yeah. her to get hurt. Like, yeah, which makes sense from a, a parent perspective. Yeah, you know? like that yeah. makes total sense. But um, she wants to go off and do her own thing, which is totally fine. Yeah, but, but they also like tell her how great she is. What, at, yeah, you know, they're very encouraging. Yeah, yeah. where the difference is, brave was like her parents were like, kind of like they're like, we have this idea for what you're gonna be. And she was like, no. Yeah. It's like, well, what do you want to be? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that, like, she was just like yeah. angry at them and for the nothing. Mom turned into a bear, and I didn't see that coming. <laughs> yeah, and then that also, it had a princess and the frog thing where it like made you think that it was going to tackle these issues. Yeah. Like, it was, oh, we're going to deal with something <coughs> here. But then the mom turns into a bear, and then they're just chasing bear cubs around and smashing plates for the rest of the yeah. movie. Oh, and they're yeah. like, all right, we worked uh, through our issues, I guess. <laughs> just to close them on a discussion, this is a piece of trivia you guys might find interesting. Uh, Moana is unusual in being a female wayfinder since most Polynesian wayfi- wayfinders are males. During navigation, it is important to be able to read the swells of the ocean, which is achieved by sitting cross-legged on the bottom of the boat and feel the movements of the waves in their testicles. Mm. What? That yeah. makes sense. That's uh, a... Uh, wow. So, real, real quick shout out to certain things in Moana that are great that a lot of movies are afraid to do. They showed testicles, right? <laughs> Close. <laughs> Close. Someone gets so, peed on, which is good. Okay. And then, uh, and then they also... You can tell because there's uh, homage to Mad Max Fury Road. Uh, yeah, I noticed that it. too. And it's like oh, such yeah. so overt. Yeah. Like it's such and it's like, oh wow. If you know that the filmmakers, the people behind it were like, man, Mad Max is awesome. Yeah. We should make a reference to that in Moana. That's a pretty good sign that you're dealing with like creative people that you want to I mean, they're, whatever. They made a laugh. Um, they, got, they, yeah. they know what they're doing. This also, is, this bird should have been I I, I always Disney's really good at having characters that should be utterly annoying. Mm-hmm. There's like a little rooster. <coughs> like a this chicken, guy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah. Hey, hey, mm-hmm. hey, hey. Voiced by mm-hmm. Bill Hader or something. Or no. Alan um, Tudyk. Yeah, yeah, Alan, t- Alan Tudyk. Um, and should be terrible, but made me laugh every single time yep. it, yeah. it did something Alan, stupid. Alan 
Tudduck or Tiddick, Tiddick, whatever. Uh, he's the uh, John Rathenberger of the Disney. Rathenberger. I don't he's care. Everything. <laughs> he's, he's been in all of them. He, he Who was, is he? What is he? What is this? Like? Like, he was Wash in Serenity okay, and Firefly. Yeah. Yeah. He's also in Rogue One. He's the robot. He's the I robot believe. in yeah. Rogue One. That's true. So uh, this is the second of the two podcasts I get to host. So I'm going to go a little bit over oh, the whoa. hour for the podcast. Okay. Just oh, I have a lot of stuff I want to do. So I'm just going to go a little bit over. Testicles. I, I have a, a thing I wanted to do with you guys because we usually talk about movies and Games primarily. That's what we did. So I wanted to go primarily. a little off topic, you know? Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Like that popular podcast? Well, this this popular segment in my podcast, at least is off topic. Oh. Okay. oh. Podcast segment. <laughs> we might have um, to sue ourselves. <laughs> and, and I had a little help because uh, I like to go on NeoGAF sometimes and see what the gaffers are talking about. Yeah. And I noticed a cool uh, thread, or not That's thread, but I should say forum on NeoGAF, <laughs> uh, where they do, yeah, they talk about off topic. Topics not to do with games. Okay. So, and a lot of it's like questions, you know, primarily questions thrown out to the community. So mm-hmm. I wanted to throw them out to you guys to see, get your opinions on I some of it. them. Okay. So this is to the GAF community specifically who love us, I'm sure. No, they fucking um, hate us. Yeah, they hate us. Oh, oh, oh. We uh, popped up on there once in a while and they said, I don't know these people. They hate us. They're uh, not giant bomb. And then they killed them. Love, <laughs> well, they seem to love mandatory update. Anyway, uh, so this is from Should one one gaffer. <laughs> do you guys wear white t shirts under your shirts? No. no. Like a dress shirt. Under no. a dress? No, that's something you used to do in like the fifties. Yeah, yeah. You wear how you, you hide the nipples? Shirt. Yeah, yeah. Oh, or I got it. What? Hide the nipples? Why would I hide, hide my nips. nipples? I'm not ashamed of them. Yeah, I got oh, some free the sweet nips. nips. That's how God <laughs> made me. I don't believe in him. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, you don't wear undershirts anymore. We're past that. Okay, gaffer. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it's so Southern California that. here, so it it's never. Hot. Yeah, it's that's just a way. I noticed a lot of gaffers were saying wife beater or. You know why? You know why they were? You know why they do that? Also, I'll tell you a little man secret here. It's because they want to look bigger mm-hmm. in their oh, dress shirts. It's like a brazier. So it's oh. like it's, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it kind like of a brazier, is. yeah. Okay. What uh, are they called in Seinfeld? Uh, uh, the the man's ear or the, the bro? bro? Yeah. The bro. Uh, I think they're deciding. Another inquiring mind from Gaff wants to know what are some must-try items from Trader Joe's. A lot of these questions <laughs> made me laugh a the, lot. This the is what they're JoJo's, talking about. The JoJo's cookies. The cookies. They're basically JoJo's. better than Oreos. They have uh, these milk chocolate peanut butter cups. That are amazing. Yeah. They're all, you can only get them at Trader Joe's. I bought the chocolate covered marshmallows and brought them to Adam's house, and he thought they were shit. But I love them. Yeah, hey, those are garbage. <laughs> <laughs> um, usually, their frozen foods are really good. Yeah. Like instead of buying a like a, a hungry man meal for one, <laughs> you get like a a bag of <laughs> pasta or something, mm-hmm. and it's usually pretty good and a lot more tasty. They're chicken fried rice in a frozen in a bag. Yeah, like you just throw it in a pan, cook it real quick. Mm-hmm. It, if you're in that situation, it will your body will thank you. Trader Joe's is just really good all around. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is another little bit longer here. Uh, the ridiculous notion that a supervillain can become president of the United States has almost been legitim- legitimized, legitimized by Trump's ascendancy. Do you guys think Lex Luthor as president can be pulled off? He's not a real thing. <laughs> All right. And I think I'm pretty sure he is the president. Yeah, he has been yeah. in DC uh, Universe. Also, I th- yeah, yeah. I I would say you know What's to be honest, I thought I yes. Originally, I thought it was out of the realm of possibility. <coughs> but no, no. Now Absolutely. that Donald Trump's president, no. I Th- thirst for Anything power is a staple of yeah. classic villainry. Yeah. It, the the people that are good are going to be like, oh, I'm just going to go out and just quietly help others. That's what's going to happen with those people. The people who are like, oh, like, oh, I need more, I need more, I need more. Like, there's one thing, I want to participate in public office. I want to try and influence my community better, those things. Very rarely do you get to the point where you're like, all right, I'm in Congress, yeah. and I need more. <laughs> I need more power. Also, my limited perspective is, it shows you how limited our perspectives are, because Hitler was president of Germany. Well, mm-hmm. Dictator. So, well, yeah, but he was president first. Yeah, but yeah, he was president first. first. And, and the thing is, is that like, that's, so that's not out of the realm of possibility for Lex was Luthor to be. Was president or like chancellor? Yeah, he, was, yeah. he was, I mean, like he was but basically he was voted, elected. Right? Yeah, like yeah, he, he was elected. elected. Then he yeah. became emperor supreme. Then, yes. he, then he declared himself. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it happens. Do you believe in <laughs> destiny? That everything happens. The video game? No, no, no. Oh, skip that one. Uh, (laughs) What do you want from Tarantino's next movie? He's only going to do two more movies. I think that he's going to do more than that. He he says he's going to go. He's going to drop the mic and he's going to go. Has he said that? Reservoir Dogs two, three movies ago. He said this is my last one. Kill Bill four. (laughs) He's he's, well. There was discussion of Kill Bill four because he filmed all those scenes with Vernita Green's daughter. Oh yeah, that's right. To save and then. (laughs) 
Anyway. I got all this footage of a little girl. I, <laughs> a I, I think a Quentin Tarantino, he's, he's mentioned before that he would do a horror movie. Mm-hmm. And oh. I think a Tarantino horror movie would be pretty cool. I think science fiction. Oh, yeah, so, science we talked about, yeah. 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 You're like really something on a spaceship, a bunch of, a bunch of wacky awesome. characters are all caught together on a spaceship spiraling I'd, towards the sun. I'd awesome. like to see him do a one-off James Bond. Whoa, that'd okay. be cool too. Just because oh, he was supposed yeah. to do Casino Royale. I'd like to just see him do like, he can pick whoever he wants. It doesn't have to Idris be Elba. continuity. Idris Selva, there you go, yeah. Yeah, sure. It, like, it, nothing matters. Like, just, just make a James Bond movie that you want to make. Hmm. I'd, I'd love to see that. Cool, cool. Um, this is uh, some quadcopter advice. <laughs> I have been looking at the DJI Mavic because I'm very interested in taking video and I like the features of the Mavic. However, I've never flown a drone before and the thought of crashing an expensive one is making me pause. Is the Mavic beginner friendly, or should I get a cheaper drone to learn on? It's, if it's so, a, what it, would you recommend? It's a great starter drone. I, I, but I think that's the one that Bernie crashed. Uh oh. So I don't know. Uh, stay oh, away from okay. that one. All right, we'll stay away from that one, listeners. All of the gaffers watching. <laughs> we saw someone in a park the other uh, the other day it's setting up drone. setting up his VR. Oh, his VR goggles drone goggles to go flying around the park. That's Man. cool. I yeah. want a drone, but not now. No, no. You gotta be a millionaire to do that. <laughs> I, I want first. I need a self-driving car, and then I want that drone to follow me. Yeah. <laughs> and you want to be like, "Where's my car?" Yeah. There it is. Well, you're gonna be in your self-driving car with your headset yeah. controlling your drone and that's my, flying over your car. And my, my pet Furby and my Neopet, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I'm just living that digital lifestyle. Man. Amazon Echo, how are things? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> gobble gobble. That's so cool. Uh, well, I think that about does it for today. Oh, oh, right. Thank you guys for being on my podcast. Uh, at least no podcast What's today. This podcast can called? you uh, play mm-hmm. the video of the Furby in the microwave? Of course. No, I ending explain. Ending explain. Wait, no, what? I don't care about Malfoy's head. Oh, that's Where's fantastic. The <laughs> in the don't see that either. Oh, yeah. Don't, it's, no, don't, don't spoil that. That's no actually from the, that's the very first shot of the movie. No spoilers. Uh, well, yeah. And, and thank you to Omaha Steaks and Movement mm-hmm. Watches for sponsoring this podcast. We truly appreciate it. Much appreciate it. And, uh, these are the directors. We're watching a video of the directors of the movie talking helping to Moana. a little girl, the little, little main character of the film. Reader lines, but they're both wearing Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> that great. was done on purpose. That's so good. You know they went to the other room like, that little bitch. Do they? I don't <laughs> look little, at them though. They, that, oh God, I can't stand her. She's the worst. And he's like, I know, I know. What Almost a diva. <laughs> She'll grow up and have a drug addiction. It's fine. <laughs> Such old mean she apparently, She apparently old recorded, queens. I guess recorded a lot of her, her like lines and sang the songs when she was like 13. Oh. She's like 16 now. And then her voice dropped. <laughs> Am I the only one whose voice I'm dropped? Voice. I'm Moana. <laughs> I have testicles now. <laughs> I can follow the waves. I'm a wave Where's Dwayne? Get Dwayne in here. <laughs> oh, well, Kick thank you guys ass. for uh, letting me host the podcast oh, these God. last two weeks. It's been a pleasure. And uh, we'll see you in a few minutes with the post show. Also, check out our new merch. Got my LA t-shirt on. That's Bruce cool. got his uh, Christmas shirt. Christmas shirt Bruce on. There's a stain on it. Yeah, that's I, in the Rooster Teeth you store. You guys keep taking all the sizes that fit me, so that's cool. You guys can share clothes. Yeah, that's we true. need a closet here at the office. Yeah. Oh. that we'll, we can always change into. <laughs> <laughs> need something to come out of. Oh all right. boy. Night. Bye. Good night. So this is what's going to happen to Lawrence, yeah. essentially, yeah. but well, with water. Well, no, this is live footage right now of everyone reacting to Lawrence mm-hmm. coming to Japan. <laughs> you know what? I can't <laughs> wait. Preparing. You know what I can't wait for? <laughs> I can't wait for Lawrence's plane to land and for him to get off the plane and immediately start telling them how they should prepare for disasters. <laughs> oh man.